Okay, so remember that they're changing my voice. So in this part, you see that the word bat is used as an example for the T being the feminine suffix. So you have the word ba meaning soul, and the T is the feminine suffix. So we see on the Narmer palette that there's the deity bat on the top, okay? And it's like this, um, it almost could be a gay guy or a sort of masculine, big, um, black female or something, or what have you, right? That's how it comes off. You know, the, how the deity's depicted. Now the Narmer palette might have been altered. They might be uh, making up what the name of the deity was. There's all kinds of possibilities. And you see that with the Bible, with, you know, what books they allowed in the Bible, what they didn't. You see this is a recurring theme. And so is the wordplay, right? The different languages come into play, right? For example, the word um, a soul, meaning the sun in Spanish. You see soul invictus, right, in Latin. Okay. And Jesus, uh, you know, that's the name they use for Jesus in Spanish. Okay. And why is that? Well, you know, the wordplay goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And it shows that there's a kind of common source for these cultures. And as we review the indigenous cultures of the world, we have to ask ourselves, well, when you get the official explanation for their cultures, is it bullshit? I mean, when you look at history books, they come up with an official explanation that's printed in countless history books out there for different grade levels, different um, publishing companies, what have you. Does that mean that they're right about it? In Western culture, Napoleon said history is written by the winners. Okay? When Cortez was doing what he was doing in Mexico, you think they told the truth about everything? The Native American wars in America. Okay? The colonialism in India and Africa and, and the Opium War, right? There's a lot more to it. And there's facts that they're omitting that have to do with secret societies and, and betrayal and pre-existing relationships. I'll go as far as say, how I feel right now is that Columbus wasn't the first whitish, Jewish, LGBT-ish person, as he's depicted, that is, um, to come to America. And you get Colum meaning the dove, I'm told. And you see the various parts in the Bible. I believe it's Nahum where they say, you know, they're going to moan like a dove, meaning they're going to be raped and they're going to be sad and there's going to be weeping and so on and so forth and all kinds of suffering. You see the spirit comes down in the form of a, a dove in the New Testament. Elsewhere in the Bible, they say that um, somebody is, you know, I think Ephraim is sens uh, senseless. You know, Ephraim and people like his tribe, whatever, is described as senseless like a dove. We see there's countless connections, right? Rhyme and reason, above and dove, and, and so on and so forth. And hawks uh, being said to, you know, hunt the doves. So why would the falcon, which is symbolic of the spirit of the Son of God, the falcon, the hawk, why would it be at odds with the, what they claim to be the spirit of the God in the Bible? And why is the devil described as a roaring lion and Christ is described as the lion of Judah? There's all kinds of connections there. There's all kinds of thought-provoking things there, and you can get lost in it. It always goes back to the core things. For example, when you look at my videos, you might be like, wow, why are so many females so dumb that they're shunning this guy? What's wrong with, you know, females in California? What's wrong with females on the internet and dating sites? What's wrong with attractive females in this world? Why do they just conform in a life that's short? He's even telling them to a T. Why is batshit crazy to reject him? And they keep rejecting him. They keep ignoring him. They keep following the devil. You might look in the mirror and ask yourself why you're doing that. And you'd be right to ask yourself these things. So when you look at it, after all these thousands of videos and all these profound explanations, all these martial art demonstrations, the martial art challenge, why aren't they like, hey, I'm, I'm on his side or I'm going to rally to him and, and obey him and so on and so forth? Because they're too busy focused on the concrete jungle bullshit, right? Use, confuse, and abuse. They're, they're in a daze, right? A magic spell, a dizzy spell. They're too busy thinking about stupid shit that doesn't matter. And it's not just stuff on TV or social media. Okay, it's what they put into their life. Their personal program. Their personal compartment. Their personal culture that the New World Order put there. Let's say you were an Arab, for example. You're listening to the white man's proxy version of Arab history. Okay? No matter what group you are from, the history that you take pride in is the white man... The Jews, the LGBT community, and the token minorities version of your history. If history is written by the winners, okay, and it's not the true story, it's his story and his 
Tory and highs Tory, Tory, the ones who were loyal to the um, to the English during the Revolutionary War. You know, the Whigs and Tories. Then what might it be omitting? And what penalty should you uh, immediately assign to the groups that are benefiting from it? If you live in a town and there's people from a long line of pirates who cheated you, everything lied about your history, da 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 da. You're like, you want your daughter, whether you're one of them or not, you want your daughter to date them? Yeah, go date. You know, Captain Hook is fucking retarded. And they, as a people, as peoples, as groups, did it to themselves. And soon every group will be so guilty after my flesh dies that it's clear to even a, a complete fucking retard that no one should be getting married, no one should be reproducing. It's a sad, and again, this is not a racial supremacy argument. These are the facts, the truth. When they talk about slavery and the Native American genocide, is that being racist toward whites, Jews, and LGBT? If I point out that, hey, there was Jews there. There's a reason why there's a lot of people of Jewish descent in Mexico, for example, because there was a bunch of Jews with the colonists. There's a reason why uh, Thomas Jefferson looks like a Jew. There's a reason why Benjamin Franklin looks like a big English Jew, because there's a bunch of Jews with them. Is that fucking racism? You're going to you're going to cause people to be angry. So it's okay to point out history in a way that makes the white man look bad, but not the Jew, not the LGBT community, not the token minorities. Fucking retarded. Their scale is preposterous. So when we see that the word sport has the T in it, right? Sport. And it's like the word spar, but it's a different activity meant to be superimposed on sparring to be done instead of sparring so people can say hey look at me i'm a false idol instead of giving the royal african falcon martial art order its credit and we look at the word spartan after the word spar after the part of the word that says spar you have the t the spar t and spar ant you have the peasant now again you know no offense to white people i'm, I'm part white okay the word european you have the word peon now let's run it by are there any kings in western history that make us go wow that guy's graceful that guy's divine no they're people who ripped other people off in feudal systems etc you know like napoleon said history is written by the winners not a single one of them, not king Leonidas, not king richard none of them can be seen by the rational insane person as impressive or graceful or divine they're just people who cheated their way to the top from families that cheated their way to the top rather who cheated a bunch of hard-working white people and whoever else was there at the time and exploited them and extorted them, made them unhealthy because they kept wanting more and more and more and they kept fighting with each other over petty things and they're just causing mass suffering. Can we then turn around and assign them royal status? So we see there's no known morally precise or even very moral European leaders in all of European history. Now again, should you be mad that you're not the son? Should you be mad that you can't jump as high as Michael Jordan? Should I be mad that I don't jump as high as Michael Jordan? Or that I'm not the fastest swimmer or the fastest runner? You should be happy with the place God gave you. And you should come into the divine order so you can actually be in an actual place and not some role-playing game for sissies, right? So when you see that European, right, it's saying a peon. And you also get the word rope. Yeah, why is that there? Well, they say treat you like a king, Rodney King, Martin Luther King, manifest destiny, the ship's manifest was Africans, and he had the Igbo people, and Obi is, uh, the word Obi is Igbo spelled backwards, it means king heart, uh, essence, center, temple, core, and we look at Egypt, and you see a bunch of black-skinned pharaohs who laid the foundation to a royal African falcon martial arts, the true king. So the T isn't just the feminine suffix when we're talking about, um, kind of LGBT kind of Greek. Greek is a great example. Greek frats. Greek and Roman frats, right? I just read today this one white gentleman made a, a video and I was reading the annotations. It said the Egyptians valued the afterlife and the Romans valued gold. And which one of them gave you the Bible? The early dynasties that are that tried to value the afterlife or before they were starting to get, to get led by scum? Or was it the Romans who value gold? And as the Roman culture evolves, do we have hyper-capitalism, hyper-materialism, hyper-consumerism, or do we have a bunch of profoundly spiritual people who aren't gold diggers, who don't throw the good guy under the bus, who prepare for death? They did, are not qualified 
to have an order that tells you about God. When it comes to being greedy, certain groups are like the bell that rings the loudest. And I'm not going to get into them because I'm not going to break the rules on YouTube. And I'm, I'm trying here, YouTube. I'm trying to say this in a way that doesn't break your rules. But my goodness, should this be said bluntly in a way that causes everyone to wake up? And that's part of what your masters are afraid of, YouTube. They're afraid that if I say this directly and in a divine voice, that's why they changed my voice, that people are going to realize the point of life and stop being evil and stop raping and killing each other and doing all these horrible things. And they're going to give people the credit that is due to them. The Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order wasn't built overnight. And what they built is far, goes far beyond Rome. Rome didn't last that long. Africans were there for thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, like 300,000 years. And out of, of martial and moral refinement came the Royal African Falcon Kings. When people can't say that, they're peons. When people aren't that, they're peons. And if people say, pretend that they're that, they say, I'm related to King Todd, okay? It is a profound injustice if they try to use any of their related to King Tut, and I don't care if they are, while they're not the Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order. The true king, the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, not Caesar from Rome. Rome scrambled his more. They say more, 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 and the wolf is a symbol of Rome, the Roman people, but the fair reproductive cycle. Pharaoh elevated Joseph. What happened when the Jews were in Rome? Pilate said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to let him free. No, I can't because I'm too greedy. Yeah, you know, execute him. But Pharaoh elevated Joseph. And the people of Egypt in the Bible are called the people of God. Look it up. The city of the sun, the sun answering God's call. Aswan. But Rome, Rome crucified Christ because of the spirits they listened to and the spirit they didn't listen to. Thank you. Okay, I forgot to bring up that Ramses did, you know, treat the Jews unfairly in this story. And I'm referring to the story where Rome crucified Christ. And when it's right up their alleyway, we see that that's why they're being used as an example. And I do believe it's uh, symbolic and figurative and so on and so forth. And it's a story based on something else. So let's look at the, the Garden of Eden. It's just like Babylon. Babylon was great and then it fell. The Garden of Eden had Cain and Abel. Do you just chop it up to the place of Cain and, and ignore the divine significance? The same with Egypt. Moses was taken into the house of the royal family. Joseph was elevated to Pharaoh's right hand. He interpreted his dreams. He showed him love. The Egyptians were a lot more gracious to the Jews than people would like to make it seem. They always remember Ramses. They never remember the Pharaoh who elevated Joseph. In fact, I don't think the name of the Pharaoh is even in the Old Testament or in the Bible anywhere. It's like with, you know, with black people. Racists always remember thieves and people who have been abused by the system to the point where they're criminals or they go insane and they start abusing people or they start doing drugs. People on welfare, they never remember the righteous. It's like they got blinders on. And when it comes to my videos, some people might very well point out videos that, that sound very annoying, I'm very fumed, what have you. And they don't remember two obvious things among other, uh, among other things. One, that I have countless great and perfect videos and, and they were edited. Two, that I'm God's son. It doesn't matter if I'm babbling. Watch that, read the annotations, have someone who can tolerate it, explain it to you, what have you. Would you not pick up your child from kindergarten, okay, because he's starting to babble and the government's fueling him and he's having trouble spot, uh, talking? Would you not hear him out ever again? Your wife, your brother, your friends? Abraham was willing to sacrifice his child on the drop of a hat for God. And I'm God's son, the commander. You see what I'm saying? And so we see with attractive women, they don't do that math. How can you who reject Christ, who reject rallying to Christ, say that you have the brain capacity to consent in a valid way? If you don't know how to fly a plane, should you try to fly it for no reason? Just to be reckless, just because you can say that you have sovereignty. If you don't know how to drive a car, 
If you don't know how to raise a woman, should you say, well, I raised my daughter, there's nothing wrong with her? Or should you come, rally to Christ? She can teach you to be a man. And then you can teach your daughter to be a woman. And she can learn from me to be a woman. You see what I mean? 